You know, it's crazy. When you start talking about money, um, <clears throat> it gets crazy in the church. Not just in the church, just even in the world. Because, and ultimately this, don't let money be your... Money likes to promise you things that it can't deliver. And so this is the context of the conversation. Um, as a young man, and I'm talking to all young men, young women, and older uh, males and females, everyone in the house. Money likes to promise you some stuff that it can't deliver. And so we were talking about 1 Corinthians 10, 31, which is whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all for what? The glory of God. So you're not working you're not doing what you're doing for yourself. You're not doing what you're doing for your family. You're doing it for the Lord. And this is important. Your why is more important than your what. And this is what we were talking about. Your why, like what am I supposed to do? What, am I, what about tomorrow? What about this, far, how far down the road? What about after I graduate college? What, you know, what am I supposed to? Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Your why is more important than your what. And we were talking about that. And, um, and, and ultimately this, not working for money not working for money. And I wanted you to see this in Matthew chapter uh, 6, uh, 24. It says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. Uh, really, the word there is mammon, which means the spirit of money, that which would promise you, spirit meaning breath, that would promise you something. And it was funny, I was, after this Wednesday night message, uh, I was talking at home uh, with the boys, and two of them were in here, and I, they said, one of them said, hey, you know, it's crazy, when you start talking about money, um, <clears throat> it gets crazy in the church, not just in the church, just even in the world, because he said, for some of us, it's like, you're talking about my master. He's like, it's kind of like, ooh, you're talking about my master. Don't be talking about my master. And so there, the, the, if, if, if when, when money is being talked about, it bothers you, that's a key that it's your master. So, so, so you could right now, like if that's you, when, because i just talking about money right now, and it bothers you, you're serving the wrong Lord. I can, because it, it is even... We're, and we're not talking about, I'm not trying to raise dollars. I'm not trying to get you to give me something. I'm talking about, if it's kind of, uh, why are you talking about money? Why are you talking about my master? You know, why are you talking about my master, bro? bro do, you, do you really need to be talking about my master? I thought we were here to talk about the Bible. Don't be talking about my master. But you can, here's the deal. Whatever one you come under... Like, if I come under the Lord, then that means I stand over mammon. If I come under mammon, that means I stand over the Lord. You'll see this in your life, in my life. This is what, and I think that some of us have, we, we, we've come under the Lord, but we've let mammon stay sidelined like with us. Like, we're together serving the Lord. No, no. Whatever I come under, the other one other comes under me. So, I, I come under mammon. God, actually, that's what happens. I, I, no longer does he direct where my life. Money directs my life. The job directs my life. What I could go do, what I could go make directs my life. I'm telling you, so we just got to get these things back in order. And, and ultimately this, don't let money be your master. Because it is an evil taskmaster. It, it, it'll tell you things, it'll drive, it'll work you, it'll, it'll hurt you, it'll, you're, you'll, you'll miss the best moments of your kids' lives, all because it's saying you have to, you have to, you have to. And so just making this adjustment this morning of coming under the lordship of, of, of Jesus Christ, coming under his lordship and asking him and then commanding the other. This is what's super, super important, commanding the other. So when I come under the lordship of Jesus, mammon now comes under me, and I tell money what to do. And it's time that we tell money what to do, instead of it always talking to us. Because everyone here knows money likes to talk. It likes to tell you you can't, tell you you don't have enough, tell you blah, 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 or even say, if you could just get this, then you could have this joy, or you could have this peace, or you could have this fulfillment. That's a lie. I can have that because of what Christ has done. And so it's important that we recognize that. And I'm just going to pull out Hebrews chapter 1. This goes with this. Are not, um, are not angels ministering spirits sent to administer or serve the heirs of salvation? Like we have, 
At our disposal, we have so much. But more than an angel, I don't know why it is. We, th- we want to say, oh, an angel showed up. God showed up. The one who commands angels. And he showed up and he sent, made a way and he sent his son Jesus. And, and if he was willing to give you Jesus, will he not also freely give you all things? You have, and I have a good father. You know what we need more than anything else in the church? We need our prayers to be bolder. You have not because you, we talk about this all the time. You look, hey, you want that chocolate chip? Have you ever been to somebody's house and, and you're hungry or you're thirsty and they got the Cokes out and they offer you one and, and you're like, nah, I'm good. And you really, you really want a Coke. Is, am I the only one that's ever done this? I, this has happened. I remember the first time I was with my, uh, my now my wife, being uh, at McDonald's. Her, her mom was driving, and I got to ride with them after basketball, and they went by McDonald's, uh, and I was super hungry. Now, I was like my middle boy, Samuel. He is uh, like filled the legs with food, right? And uh, she's like, hey, you want anything? And I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, are you sure you don't want anything? And I'm just new to that you know, like in their car, I'm like, uh, oh, best behavior. I'm like, are you sure you don't want anything? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm good. I'm good. And then she's like, are you sure? I was like, okay, I'll just have a McChicken, a double cheeseburger, and a number one. <laughs> True story. We have to ask like that. We have a good father. And did you know for the next six years, I had a lunch that my mom would pack me. I'd get a school lunch, and then she would pack me a lunch every single day. I ate three lunches my entire high school career. (laughs) And after school. And it all came because of asking. Hey, you think you could? I really like those Virginia ham sandwiches. And she would bring in these Ranger bars. And listen... God loves you. And he didn't love you when you were good. He loved you and me when we were just filthy. And and even when we are filthy, or even if, if you've not been made, made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you are born again, the Bible doesn't say you become righteous. It says you're made it, it, it's, it's, this, it's, it's the idea, and we're going to look at this this morning, that, that you emerge righteous. You emerge righteous. Like when you're born again, this is like the butterfly. Metamor- there's a metamorphosis that you emerge righteous. You don't come out of the cocoon and try to put wings on. You are righteous because of Jesus. Well, how much more? As the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All of these promises. You're not, you're not going to become righteous. There's nothing you can do to make yourself righteous. It's what Jesus has done. And it's a free gift for you and me. So it's important that we recognize that we have a Father that wants to give us good things. And we start praying bolder prayers. And we start telling money what to do instead of it telling us what to do. Because we serve the Lord. Amen. 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 And so we're going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning, but I think it would be good um, for us just to stand up again this morning for a second and tell money something. I I don't know what you got to tell it. You could tell it multiply. You're working for me. You could, what do you, I mean, I'm serious. It's talking all the time to you and saying, I, I, I'm not going to be enough for this. If you'll work harder, then I'll be enough for that. No. So we're going to take a, take a moment and we're going to command uh, just the same way that the Lord direct, commands us and gives us direction. We're going to speak to our finances and come under. And even this, if the Lord tells you something, you're going to have to come under his word. This is what I'm talking about right now. I'm not just talking about pulling something out of thin air and like, okay, let's just start talking stuff. Okay? You can talk stuff if you want to talk stuff, but we believe, therefore we speak. So what I speak, I don't just pull things out of the air. Okay? I don't just pull things out of, you know, somebody else's pocket. No, I pull things out of my heart where the Lord speaks to me. This is we believe, therefore we speak. Why things don't often work is we're just 
we're, we're not a name it, claim it, blab it, grab it group, but we are, you speak to the situation by faith. In other words, what the Lord speaks to your heart, will you yield to that and put it forth and bring it forth into this realm? The, the words that he spe- are speaking to hearts, they're, they're, they didn't originate out here. He's speaking right here, but he's looking to get them out here. And so if you'll yield to what you get here, it will bring, you'll bring it about here because it, does, it didn't author, you weren't the author of it. And because you're not the author, you're not the one that has to finish it. This is important. Okay, so we're not just saying whatever. We're saying you say, and so you can have pastor say for you, but that's a bunch of malarkey. You can come under that word, yeah, but how about your word? Philemon 1.6 tells us this. One chapter in this whole, ber- whole book, Philemon, he said, let, let, let the, uh, uh, your, your faith become effectual by acknowledging or speaking every good thing that's yours in Christ. It's important that we have active faith. How? Acknowledge what he says to you. Acknowledge what he says about you. It's time that we start speaking what he, spe- he speaks to our heart. He speaks to our spirit. So you know, you can, right now, if there's something that popped into you concerning whatever. Some of you all need to, some of you need to start tithing. This is not, this, not, this is what the, again, coming under, you, you need to come under what the Lord, and you just check with the Lord, and if that bears witness with your heart, then you just got to, you got an opportunity to yield. You know, you could, you can't just bring an offering any way you want and have it be accepted by God. Matter of fact, if you're going to do it the way you want, when you want, how you want, you might as well keep that in your pocket. Because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving, not his obligation. I'm telling you, this, is, this matters. It matters to God how we, bring, how we bring our gift. It matters. And there's conversations that need to be had between husbands and wives, and, and I'm telling you. And even as young, young men and women, as you're, if you're courting and you're dating, it, you ought to establish now who's the Lord of your, of your life and the Lord of your home and what master you're going to serve. And this right here, this is an offering message. And, and you know what? Sometimes there's got to be just faith coming. And so you want to see victory in finances? Speak faith to your finances, to, to, your, to mammon. Speak faith to it and watch it move. So we're going to acknowledge the, the, our, our heart this morning. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to speak, but I want you to speak. Whatever, it, you know, it doesn't have to be articulated with some great whatever. Just say, just speak what you get in your heart. Just be you, right? Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you are, G. we just declare Jesus is Lord, and we say we serve you, Lord. We come underneath your lordship. We come under your lordship and we serve you and we love you. We tell you we love you and and we we will not serve mammon. Mammon will serve us. And so we just tell you mammon, we tell you money to multiply. We tell places where we've been robbed. We, we, We thank you, Father, for payback in the name of Jesus. We thank you for favor. We speak for favor over, uh, over building situations. We speak for favor on jobs. Father, we just thank you even to let go, to let loose money that is rightfully yours. You've been faithful and you've worked. Father, I thank you for the promotions that are to come. I thank you for the open door. I thank you for favor. That which changes rules and favor is not fair. We thank you for favor in those situations right now that you would just uh, 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 turn on, on some someone's decision because you moved on their heart. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you that we have more than enough to give unto every good work for your glory. Lord, we just lift our hands to you this morning and and we just say these are for you. These hands are for you. Everything we put our hands to, it's for you. And so we establish our why. It's for your glory. We work for your glory. Why? It's for your glory, not not, not, not just so we could be sustained. It's for your glory. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.